Cedric Kamsa Jubilee, you know, sage pose, that's a meditative pose. A Sukhasan, the happiness pose, just simply cross-legged or Ardha Padmasan or any other with spine upright, shoulders tucked back. Eyes gently closed and back of the head in line with the spine. Trying to slowly withdraw your minds to look at that vast infinite space in front of your closed eyes. To look at colors, shadowy movements, darkness or light. Continue dwelling into this Chidakash. Then slowly taper your awareness to the eyebrow center, visualizing a candle flame there. Keeping intensified awareness on this candle flame. Let us chant the mantra Om, this eternal sound Om. This amazing dhvani from which they say the universe emerged and most mantras originate. Start a song. Inhale fully, fill your lungs with oxygenated air. Exhale in an old chant. Two more rounds. Big inhale, fill the ribcage, Om Chant, exhale. Drop the awareness from the bhuva, the eyebrow center, to the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. And after getting a glimpse of the steadiness of the sage pose on the whole body, bring the right hand in Nasagraha Mudra with the index finger and the middle finger fold. Tips at the thumb back for alternate nostril kapal bhat. Exhale from alternate nostril, chat, touching the nostril closed. Pull the abdomen as in as possible. In case eyes open up at any point you're in doing kapal bhati or any pranayam, just do a mindless stare in unmani. Discontinue alternate nostril kapal bhati. Take a pause. And then start with normal kapal bhati, pulling the abdomen as in as possible. If you're a beginner, try to put the right palm on the abdomen, left on the chest so that you watch the movement of the abdomen. Active exhalation.
discontinue the practice. Make sure during Kapalbhati that inhalations are completely passive. This it's only about exhale, exhale, exhale. So is not the way we do Kapalbhati. That gets into a little bit of a bhastrika. And we want to do Kapalbhati, this magical shodan kriya, a cleanser that gives longevity, increases life span. So we do only exhales. The moment it gets into passive inhales or active inhales, pause for a moment, restart alternate nostril kapalbhati. So there are no active inhales. And then again we start kapal. Discontinue Kapal Bhati completely. Notice three things now. Check if the breath has slowed down. Check if the breath is in resonance, so the face is in a better beat than before. And whether the abdomen feels worked out at the liver, the spleen, the stomach, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the large and small intestines, all those jewels in the abdomen, activating the money pool chakra. Money means a jewel, pool means a town. Again check, has my breath slowed down? Is my breath more in rhythm? Do I feel worked out in the abs, in the abdominal area? And then come in a namaste behind you, overlapping the thumbs. Hi, namaste. Exhaling, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center. Start slowly and then pick up speed. energy. Discontinue the practice. What you have just done is work on the endocrine system's glands. Making the secretions of the 
pan of the pancreas right so you don't get into a hypo or a hyper balancing the secretions of the adrenals the gonads the islets of langerhans the thyroid the thymus conditions pituitary the pineal to reverse any hypo or hyper be it thyroid be it insulin also from depression low feeling low pulse low blood pressure to panic attacks high blood pressure hypertension because we included twists in this bellows breath fasting we now bring our hands in front and for those of us who can comfortably sit in spread any vajrasan sit in spread any vajrasan others as i showed earlier sit comfortably in sukhasan press your palms down on the mat fingers the tips are pointed towards the groin we stick our tongue out for swan pranayam like a panting dog swan means dog copy the panting dog stick the tongue out while doing this as soon as you feel settled go up into nasagraha mudra with your eye balls open your eyes go up into nasagraha mudra looking cock eyed at the eyebrow center as soon as you have discontinued use that morning saliva use the morning saliva as a serum as a tonic preferably after waking up immediately before brushing the teeth because if that saliva that serum that fluid that we may want to use as a cleanser or a tonic or a serum or to remove spots or pigmentation or for the eyes to energize the eyes dryness macular degeneration use it wherever you need it it's a rescuing remedy restart one more time swan prana <laughs> do it before there is an impending need to discontinue the moment you feel wow this is too much is an impending need to pause or discontinue then stop use your saliva your manufacturing factory spot pimples acne drooping of skin pigmentation burning of skin darkening of skin wrinkled eyebrow area upper lip area eyelid area within the eyes for macular degeneration for dryness in the eyes use as much saliva as possible contraindication be smokers and those who have had a drink or any other tobacco will not be doing this Now straighten the legs in front of you. For a quick round of Pavana Muktasan series one. So what we will be doing is pointing the toes. We are working on all the joints, all the pivots of the body. Pavana Muktasan series one. Point and flex the toes. 
because people can add Kapal Bharti to this. And from Padanguli Naman, we move on to Shetu Naman. Shetu Chakra. Ankle rotation. Reverse it. Interlock fingers below the thigh. Janu Nama. Other leg. Those targeting weight loss will incorporate Kapal Bharti. So we are doing asans and Shodan Kriya. And then we go down on our forearms to do Dvipa the Januna. So we're down there taking support, bringing the legs into a little lift for knee bends. And again doing Janu Naman. Janu is the loved one. Ask anyone who has excruciating knee pain, any knee surgery, knee problems, why Janu for knee? And here it says Janu Chakra, Dvipa, circle, knee rotation. Reverse. Discontinue the practice. Come back with the left leg straight, right ankle on the left thigh, ankle on thigh. Flip, flap the knees. Titli asan. Look at how beautifully we are blending Kapal Bharti with a Pavana Muktasa, using all the joints, the pivots. Hug the knee, straighten the leg, the other leg now. Ardha Titli Asan converts now into Puna Titli Asan. Do a cobbler pose. Doing a Namaste with the soles of the feet. Called Bhagda Kona Asan. Interlock the fingers on top of the toes. And flap the knees. Discontinue Titli Asan, but stay in Bhakta Kona Asan. Slide the feet slightly away from the groin and go down. Go down. Since this is quite an acute forward bend, we will not do Kapal Bhati here because we want to take care of the lower back, not overstraining. And while we are in this, Padashir Asan in a cobbler pose, Bhakta Kon Asan. We just exhale, letting the gravitational pull literally pull our trunk lower without stressing about, oh, I can, oh, I can't. Look at how stiff I am. I was flexible at one point. No regrets. Celebrating, investing in these breaths and these asanas at this moment. Return inhaling. 
bring the knees together and then come into a twist. A twist in such a way that the elbow goes behind the knee. Any side. Come into a namaste. And do the namaste just the way we do in front of a deity or in a temple or bowing down to someone senior. At the chest center. So kick your knee with your elbow so much that this twist brings about the namaste literally at the center, at the sternum. Look back, let the chin chase the shoulder blades. Feel it in the entire length of the abs. Come back, relax, holding the wrist. A moment or two and then change sides. Elbow behind the knee. Kick the knee with the elbow. Twist well. Bring your namaste to the chest center. Return inhaling. Again, hold the wrist. And then come back to straighten the legs. For Paschim Uttanasana. Inhaling, lift the hands up. Exhale, go down, half way. Lunging the upper trunk area. Let the lower trunk. Lift the head for now. We want to lunge well and then go down. Hold wherever you can on the soles of the feet or the toes or the ankles or the shin or the knees. Each one of the 84 lap postures they say has a drishti. This one they say is at the perineum between the anus and the urethra. Inhaling, come back. Exhale, bring your hands down. Come into Sukhasan first. Go up, lifting the knees. And then dropping them on the mat for Ushtrasan, the camel pose. No walking, swimming, gymming, core strengthening has worked for thyroid as beautifully as Ushtrasan has worked. The camel pose along with the cobra, Ujjangasana. Drop the head back. Hold the hips as if you're stopping them from falling down. When you drop the head back, inhale. Curve the spine well, tuck the shoulders back. Keep breathing normal. Return to do a counter pose after Ushtasana. Thumbs into fists. Fists below navel. Inhale fully. 
Exhale, go down. So those of us who may have any pain, knee conditions, this can be done in standing with straight legs. It's about literally massaging the abdominal organs. Okay, so it can be done even with straight legs, even with Sukhasan, the sage pose. Remember, while you hold the exhalation down, you're going to massage your abdomen. with fists, with your thumbs into fists. You're addressing any mud, any residue that needs to be removed, one which is stuck to the intestines. That flour, those wrong foods rotting out there. Last round, Mandukasa. When we are down, we are massaging the abdominal organs, especially the intestines. And we come back. As soon as we feel we want to inhale, return, straighten the legs, spread them apart. Prasarit the path, Uttanasana, spread legs. Ultimate stretch is what it means. Palms down on the mat in the center. Fingers slightly spread out. And just crawl your fingers as forward as possible on the mat or the floor. And then drop the elbows. To a point when, it, when they try touching the mat and finally, wow, voila, they touch the mat. And then lift the head. As you do this process of crawling the fingers away, bringing the forearms on the mat, succeeding with touching the elbows down on the mat, and finally sinking the spine as you lift the head up, you're going to feel the stretch in the inner thighs increasing, and that's what we want. Drop the head. Bite the hands back and lift the arms up. Inhale. As soon as you lift the arms up, go and hold the right toe, hooking it with the right hand and bring the left hand over the ear. That's right. Look up at the sky or the ceiling, tucking the left shoulder back. Continue going further down, feeling this amazing stretch at the love handle on the left side. Inhale, come back. Other side, hook the toe. Very good, keep the knee long. Inhaling, lift the hand up, right hand. And try going as down as possible. The idea is to keep the right shoulder back, turn the head, look up at the ceiling, feel the stretch. Prasarita Padangushta Asan and Parigasan are combined here. The gate pose and the spread leg. Toe hooked with Angushta, thumb pose. Posture for those tires below the blouse, suppleness in the spine and longevity. Return, bring the legs together, bend the knees. Bring your palms behind your hips. Inhaling, go up in Khandarasana. Stay there. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Don't hold the breath. 
breath can be held only when you're not holding the posture for too long. If you want to hold the posture a little longer, they're not going to hold the breath. They're going to exhale, inhale, urax, no kumbha, and reja, urax, and reja. Go all the way in, all the way. And then lock your knees and then touch the hips to the mat. And now three where speed is picked up. Take your time, don't push yourself. And come back. As soon as you're back, bend the left knee, right leg is straight, place the left palm behind the right hip and bring the right elbow behind the right knee. Twist completely. Twist, letting the chin chase the shoulder blade. Once again in this twist, just like the double knee bend twist, the eyes, the eyeballs are cornered. So you're done simultaneously with your eye exercise too. Wake them up, cornering them. And just stare mindlessly in Unmani. So you are in a Marichi Asan doing an eye cornering along with Griva, Sanchalan, Chin, chasing the shoulder blade. So many things together. Unusual blends at the same time. Come back, inhaling, change sides. Right knee bends, left elbow behind the right knee, fingers pointing the ceiling. A nice tuck, little over, about, upper part of the elbow. The twist is so much that you're trying to get the shoulders parallel to the right, to the wall. That can happen more easily if we have the right palm behind the left hip. Return. We now pick up speed in the same thing, but we are not going to push ourselves. Okay, it's going to work on our abs. Please watch. Exhale. 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 Discontinue the practice, rest it up. Hold an elbow, sorry, hold a wrist, drop it up. We now do Parshva Pavan Muktasan. Either in lying down or on the forearms. If we go on the forearms, we have to make sure the chest is high. We come into Pavana Muktasa, right? Expulsion of stagnant air. Freedom, Mukti from Pavan, the wind. And we drop the knees from side to side. Simultaneously, since the lower body is going to one side, we twist the upper body to the other. Inhale every time the knees come up. Exhale every time the knees go down. Now 
come back to the center, come into Sukhasan. Come into the lotus pose now, Padmasana. For those of us who have any knee conditions or any other pain, we can also sit in half lotus, Ardha Padmasana. We interlock our fingers behind, interlace them tight, lock at the elbow, raised arms, and we twist, go down, inhale up, twist, go down, inhale up. So we try to bring the ek chutki sindur as I call it, forehead center area to the knee or the toe. Make sure elbows are locked. We are addressing carpal tunnel syndrome tennis elbow, stiffness in the spine. We are addressing all those along with this diagonal bhastrika, the bellows breath. Last seven sets. On finishing seven sets, come back. Continue sitting in Padmasana, the lotus pose. We now bring our hands in Vajra Pradma Mudra. We interlace, interlock our fingers to a point where the index finger of the right hand has its pad rested on the left nail, left hand's index finger nail. Thumbs are absolutely open. Vajra Pradma Mudra. This is a mudra of regaining confidence. So when we are about to say introduce ourselves in front of a crowd or we have to be going up on a stage to sing or talk, or it's our turn to talk next. It can be at any point, or there is a fear in the gut. Immediately do a Vajra Pradva Mudra. With the mind's eye on the points of contact at the finger joints. To regain confidence, it is said. Vajra Pradnya Mudra. Well upon the mudra with awareness. Come out of the mudra and relax in Shavasana. Rest in Shavasana, making any final adjustments that you may want to make with your body, your clothes, your hair, and then totally relax. Thank <laughs> you.